Shalom. Brothers United in Christ, back with more of this word is the Bible, these holy scriptures. Out of just up and just pulled a few scriptures, you know what I mean? We got to piggyback right after him, you know what I mean? We got, um, we, we still break it down to second Ezra, the ninth chapter. And we was focusing on the 13th uh, verse. I want to go more into depth of that. Give me um, 2nd Ezra 9 and start from, from the 13th verse. You know what I mean? Like I said last week, we are here for the edification. We're here to edify the body of Christ. We are brothers united in Christ and we preach Christ, the wisdom of the most high power. You know, because he is the wisdom. He is the light. He's the way. He's the door. He's the way to salvation. So we acknowledge through this brother that we're going to get eternal life through this brother's name, man. This will be pushing Christ. Give me um, 9 and 13. Read that. Second Ezra 9 and 13. And therefore be thou not curious how the unpowerly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. But inquire on how the righteous shall be saved. Hold that. That's my line upon line. Give me Ezekiel, the 14th chapter from the top. Just like the scripture I said, man, the, he said, um, be not curious on how the unpowerly shall be punished and when. But rather, you know what I mean? But rather inquire on how the righteous shall be saved for whose the world is. You know what I mean? Because the new world cometh. Everybody talk about the new world order. You know what I mean? Ain't no new world order, man. Matter of fact, the next world, matter of fact, the new world is only for the righteous. And we got to inquire about this stuff. To inquire means to put into question or to seek information by questioning. You know what I mean? You want to seek this knowledge right here, the wisdom from on high on how to be righteous. Last week, we, we was breaking down the first part of this uh, verse, and we're going to go into the second part of this verse on how to be the righteous. He said, inquire, but there's a certain way on how you need to inquire. Give me 14 from the top. Ezekiel, <clears throat> excuse me, 14 and 1. Right. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me uh -huh. and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, yeah. saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. Uh -huh and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Should I be inquired of at all by them? You know what I mean? This is the Most High speaking to Ezekiel. Ezekiel is a prophet of Israel. He's sitting amongst the Israelites right now. So now the Jews, all the elders, is coming to check this brother right now. And now the Most High is telling this brother right here. He said, these brothers right here that's coming to you to come question you, they set up idols in their head, man. They got stumbling blocks, idols going on in their head. And should I be inquired of at all? Last week, we had a brother over here that I caused a little uproar. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was putting on a nice little vain show. He was screaming and stuff or whatever. I, I was reading at the time. So I heard very little. But the things that I did hear, this brother um, had um, said to the next elder right here, he said, I never ever met, you know what I mean, an um, Israelite. That don't got no answers. You know what I mean? You know, like in a sense, you know, um, I've um, heard, heard that part. And basically, he's trying to say that there's other congregations and camps that would entertain his questions. But when we come over here, we're not going to just entertain any question. Matter of fact, the Lord has said, avoid foolish questions. Avoid this stuff. But the fact of the matter is, it's not that we don't got no answers or anything. It's just that, you know what I mean, the um, answers that we do give, you don't accept them. You don't want them. That's the problem. So now, this brother right here got a whole, um, um, you know what I mean? He's not trying to inquire on how to be righteous. He's trying to inquire to be contending, just to fight and strive with brothers. But the Lord I said right here, you know what I mean? This is how he going to answer a brother. Read on. I mean, read that again, two and three. Ezekiel 14 and 2. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, right. Right. Son of man, uh -huh. these men have set up their idols in their heart. Right and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face, should I be inquired of at all by them? These brothers got idols in their head. You know, I mean, something contrary to the Bible. They got something else that they believe in, but yet they come in to check the, you know I mean, the um, men of the Lord. They come in to ask questions and whatever. They, they want to inquire, but they got something going on in their head. They got something contrary to the most high power, and yet they want to ask questions. We read the next verse. Therefore speak unto them, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord power, 
Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart. Every brother that set up the idols in their heart. You know what I mean? People got this preconce you know what I mean? This on preconcept already, pre-thoughts, you know what I mean? Thoughts, thoughts already set up in their mind that I don't believe. They don't believe in this part of the Bible. They don't believe in the Heavenly Father, but yet they want to come ask questions. And now, you know what I mean, but you know what I mean, um, try to strive and fight with brothers. Read on. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Should I be inquired of at all by them? You know what I mean, man? These, these brothers is coming up with a double mind. Think not that that man's going to receive anything from the Heavenly Father. You know what I mean? He's a wavering brother. You know what I mean? He, he don't believe in this stuff. He got something else that he believes, but yeah, he's questioning brothers. Read on. Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord power. Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face uh -huh. and cometh to the prophet, right. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. He said, I, the Lord. This is how the most I got to answer, brothers. People trying to, you know what I mean, trying to seek for the voice, you know what I mean, trying to see the skies open up or whatever, you know what I mean, trying to hear the voice of Christ and whatever. But this is how the most I answer him, brothers, right here. He said, if any brother... That set up an idol in his head and coming to a prophet. Now, we're not going to claim that we prophets. We men of the Heavenly Father. We ministers of Christ. You know what I mean? It's not that we don't have any answers. But again, the answers that you want to hear, we're not going to, you know what I mean, just, just say what you want or like whatever. We're going to give you the words of truth right here. He said, if any brother come to a prophet and they set up idols in their head. He said, I, the Lord, going to answer him according to the multitude of his idols. This is how the most I answer it, brothers, right now. He going to raise up brothers. And I want 119, verse 41. Proverbs 22, verse 17, and 119, and verse 41. You know what I mean? He going to answer brothers according to the multitude of his idols. I personally like this verse right here because, because this gives me, um, you know, this um, helps me in my conversations with brothers and, you know, with um, people in the world. He said that he's going to answer brothers according to the multitude of their idols according to what they believe it's easy to get into a conversation with a brother and then he may say something and then he try to you know I me mean, throw a little curveball and maybe try to change the conversation you know what i mean people do this often because they may get trapped off or probably you know what i mean you know trapped off or stumped so then they try to change the whole vibration or whatever but the whole point is if you listen clearly to a brother if you hear clearly to what a sister is saying. You're going to know that they got some type of idolatry going on in their head. You know what to say. Check them idols. But this is what the most I said. He said, should I be inquired of at all by these brothers? You know what I mean? You coming with a, you know what I mean, hey, I'm thought that's contrary to the scriptures already. You believe something else, but yet you want to inquire? Should I be inquired of at all? Read that verse again, verse 3. It's Ezekiel 14 and 3. Matter of fact, all... All your questions, man, there's nothing wrong with questions and whatever. We accept questions, but, the, but just like Ezra says, hey, read verse, I mean, read 9 and 13 again. I'm sorry. It's my line upon line, 9, 13. Second Ezra 9 and 13. And therefore, be thou not curious how the unpowerly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. I mean, certain questions we shouldn't entertain. Unless there's questions on how you're going to be righteous, and, you know what I mean, too, and be saved and whatever. We'll entertain that. There's no problem with answering, brothers. But you got to come correct. You can't come with no type of um, idol in your head, something contrary already. But yet you want to ask questions. You're going to get stumped, man. You know, listen, when the Lord got to set up certain brothers on this earth to answer you, according to the idols that's going on in your head. He said, I, the Lord, will answer him. Now, this is how we're going to answer over here. Proverbs 22 and verse 17. And I want, um, this is Proverbs chapter 22, verse 17. Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise. He said, bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise. Most High said, keep thy foot when thou comest to the house of the Most High. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools because they... Un because they, they consider not that they do evil. Certain brothers come up and start asking questions and just want to hold a conversation and just want to talk. But yet they're not considering that they doing evil. The Most High said, keep thy foot and be more, more ready to hear. He said, bow down thy ear. You got to come, you know what I mean? You got to listen, man. Come and learn. You know what I mean? You come in with a contrary um, vibration asking all these questions, but yet you're not trying to hear? You know what I mean? That's a problem. Read on. This is Proverbs chapter 22 and 17. 
Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. And apply thine heart to my knowledge because this is about knowledge, but knowledge puff up, up. Certain knowledge puff you up. That's why you're coming over here with some type of contrary idol on your head, trying to, you know what I mean, trying to fight with brothers. You're not inquiring on how to be the righteous. You just got a lot of knowledge puffed up in your head, and now you just want to fight and try to stump brothers. But then you're going to run into a brick wall. That's a problem. Read on. Bow down thine ear uh -huh. and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. Uh -huh. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, uh -huh. they shall with all be fitted in thy lips. If you want to talk, then let the most I build you up. It's not, you know what I mean? Listen, if you want to be heard, then let the most I build you up, man. Let him put these words in your mouth. They're going to be fitted in your lips, man. You know what I mean? Going to be, you know what I mean? Sweet like honey, man. You know what I mean? You are going to speak all the right things according to righteousness. Read on. That thy trust may be in the Lord, right. I have made known to thee this day, right. even to thee. Even to thee. Read on. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge? But people don't want this type of counsel. They do not want the counsel of the Most High. The elder just came down. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the unpowerly. Some people, you know what I mean, is I'm taking wicked counsel in this earth. They getting pulled left and right. They driven with the wind. You know what I mean? They don't want the counsel of the heavenly father. But yeah, he said, have I not written unto thee counsels? You know what I mean? Excellent counsels. Right? Read on. That I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth. Read. That, thou, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. Right. That send unto thee. You know what I mean? If um, you got a mic and then say if you profess the Bible and you will call yourself a minister or a preacher, you should have some answers. You shouldn't sit up here and just be quiet. You know what I mean? Pass up questions. Pass them along or whatever. Why are you up here then? But the fact of the matter is, this is a two-way street. As a brother is giving out counsel, giving out words of truth, trying to teach, you got to be willing to listen. You can't come over here and try to run your mouth. That's not how that works. He said, be more ready to hear. Read that verse again. This is Proverbs chapter 22, verse 21. Three. That I may make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, right. that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. That send unto thee, because the most I send you this, brother. Or maybe this sister. And you know what I mean? You got the word of truth. But some people don't want to hear the truth. They are complacent with lies. Brothers want to hear smooth things. Brothers want to hear smooth things. You know what I mean? The th things that make you feel good. Listen, man, the things that's harsh or whatever, that's, that's what's going to make you do good. 119 and 41 real quick. This is Psalm chapter 119, verse 41. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord. Even thy salvation according to thy word. According to thy word. Even salvation according to thy word. Some people want to get saved and they want good things to happen, but it's not according to the word of the Heavenly Father. They still want good things to happen to you according to America. They still waiting for the government to bless them. They're not waiting for the Heavenly Father to bless them. Most, you know what I mean? David, I said, let thy salvation come according to thy word. This is the word of the Heavenly Father, the Holy Scriptures. Read on. This is Psalm chapter 41. Great. Verse 42, Great. so shall I, excuse me, so shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, right. for I trust in thy word. For I trust in thy word, so will I have wherewith to answer him, you know what I mean, that reproaches me. Because brothers want to come up just for repro um, reproach, just for strife and just for fighting. Um, First Peter 3, 15. Read. First Peter 3 and 15. Great. But sanctify the Lord power in your hearts uh -huh. and be ready always to give an answer to every man right. that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you right. with meekness and fear. With meekness and fear. He said, be more ready. He said, be ready to give an answer to him who, who I'm asking you about the hope. Just like the scripture I say, he said, be ready. Be more ready to hear. Just like the brother who's giving out the counsel, he got to be ready to give an answer. But you got to accept the answer. If it's coming from the word of the Heavenly Father, then you got to just deal with it. You got to be quiet. You might got to shut your mouth and just listen, man. Just listen. You can't come with no double-minded business. Go back to um, Esdras, my line upon line. And we're going to read 13 again and read down to 15. Second Esdras 9 and 13. And therefore, be thou not curious how the unpowerly shall be punished and when. And when. You know what I mean? Que <laughs> So-called queen... You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? The um, so-called queen just died. And, you know what I mean? All the Israelites, all the conscious Israelites and whatever was just all glory. You know what I mean? Was all rejoicing, being happy and stuff and everything. They happy that this stuff is happening. They can't wait for the, you know what I mean, for them to be um, punished and stuff like that and everything. They got the wrong mindset, man. 
They're not humble. All this, you know what I mean? That death just proved there's, there, there is a lot of brothers and sisters in Israel today is not humble. They're not meek. They're not humble at all. They still curious about the wicked. They making all the clips, all the YouTube clips, all the posts and stuff about the wicked. They not, they not inquiring on how to be the righteous. We the righteous nation, and we gotta lead the charge. Read on. And therefore, be thou not curious how the unpowerly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. And we gotta get into about the world a little bit. Read down. Then answered I. And said, I have said before, and now do speak, and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. He said, it's, it's going to be many more of them that perish than them that will be saved. We broke this down before, but we're going to break it down again. Give me first Ezra um, 8 from the top, and you give me this, um, um, give, give me this James 4 and 4. And I want um, St. John 7 7. We read this real quick. Second Ezra 8 and 1. He said, he said, sorry. Second Ezra. He said that it's going to be many more people who is going to perish than them be saved. The fact of the matter is the masses of the world is going to, you know, be perish. That's why we're trying to come out here and teach brothers how them to be righteous. Because only a few brothers, a few sisters will be saved. And that's why we're trying to counsel and give, you know, me, um, give them um, instruction on how brothers and sisters can't be saved. Don't be like the world, because the masses of the world going to perish. They're going to perish. Read on. This is 2 Ezra chapter 8, verse 1. And he answered me, uh -huh. saying, The Most High hath made this world for many, right. but the world to come for few. But the world to come but for few. Hold on. Hold that, because I'm coming back. I'm going to break down the first three verses. You give me this um, St. John chapter 17 and verse 9. 9 through 18. Over here. He said, he said the, you know what I mean? The Lord made this world for many, but the world to come is only for few. And that's the righteous people. That's the people who's locking down this word right now. David just said it. He said, grant me thy salvation according to thy word. Not many people following after this word of truth and sincerity. This is what we try to break down. The masses of the world not following after the Bible. The masses of the world don't believe in the Bible. The masses of the people in the world don't, don't believe in the Heavenly Father. Look at their lifestyles. Look how they live it. They contrary to the word over here. But now, if you focus in to be the righteous, you got to, you know what I mean, deal a certain way. You got to deal a specific way according to this word. Over here, read this real quick. James 4 4. James 4 and 4. Three. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, right. know ye not that the friendship of the world right. is enmity with the Most High? Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High? Read. Excuse me. Uh, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High? Right. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High. Whosoever be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Heavenly Father. Give me John, um, St. John 7, 7. Drop that, James, right there. Over here, 17 and verse 9. St. John. He said, you know what I mean? Many people, it's going to be many more people who is going to perish than them that, 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 that is going to be saved. He said, the world that he made right now is for many. But the world that come is only for few. It's only for the righteous people. That's why we can't be, you know what I mean, trying to be all, um, you know what I mean, cool, cool and make friends and buddy-buddy and fall in love with the people in the world and everything. The master of the world going to go. The master of the world going to go. Read. This is St. John chapter 17, verse 9. Read. I pray for them. Right. I pray not for the world. Christ has said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Everybody talk about pray for the world. They see Putin blowing up, um, you know, um, over there in Ukraine. They um, see all this gun violence in America, all, this, um, all of the school shootings, people getting sick, people getting, you know what I mean, wars waging, people getting killed in the streets and whatever. They say pray for the world. They tell us to pray for the world, pray for America. Christ wasn't in the world praying for the world. Christ said, I pray for them, I pray not for the world. So why would we pray for the world? Man, the world is going to go. The world's at enmity with the Heavenly Father. They hate the Heavenly Father. They hate the Most High Power. They enemies to the Most High Power. Christ has said, let's read it again. This is St. John chapter 17, verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I pray not for the world. Christ wasn't in the earth talking about pray for, um, pray for Pilate, pray for the Romans. Pray for the Greeks or whatever. He wasn't the earth saying that stuff. He said, man, I'm praying for the brothers who's holding on to this word, man. Who, who believe in me? Read on. I pray for them. Right. 
I pray not for the world, right. but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Right, for they are thine. We the most high, man. You know what I mean? We his property. Read on. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, right. and I am glorified in them. And I'm glorified in them. That's how the most high coming, man. Read on. And now I am no more in the world, right. but these are in the world. Right. And I come to thee, holy father. Keep through thine own name right. those whom thou hast given me, right. that they may be one as we are. I mean, one as we are. He said, I and you and you and me. We all in the heavenly father. We one. That don't mean that, you know what I mean, no um, 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 trinity business. Ain't no, you know what I mean, God, the Holy Spirit, and Christ, and whatever. And they, they are the same um, 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 being. Then why would the most high, you know what I mean, why would Christ say that we could be one with them? Does that mean that we Christ or God or whatever? Nah. It's the understanding that you got to attain to. That means that we all agree. A lot out to the same word. We believe the same thing, same judgment, same mindset. Read on. This is how you become one with the Heavenly Father. Read. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. That's what Christ do. This is what we are here to do. That's why, you know what I mean, Christ had left certain brothers in this earth for whenever to keep certain brothers in this, you know what I mean, in his name. We in Christ's stead, read. While I was with them read. in the world, right. I kept them in thy name. Read. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. Right. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, what, right. that the scripture might be fulfilled. That the scripture might fulfill. That the scripture might be fulfilled. You know what I mean? The scripture, the same scripture that I'm Christ is holding. You know what I mean? The same Scripture that Paul was pushing. You know what I mean? This is the same word of the Lord that we hold it right now today. All these scriptures are going to come, you know what I mean, come true. Read on. But now, excuse me, and now come I to thee. Right. In these things I speak in the word, right. in the world, that they might have my joy right. fulfilled in themselves. Right. I have given them thy word, right. and the world hath hated them. He said, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them. Read on. Because they are not of the world, right. even as I am not of the world. Christ has said it plainly. He said, I have given these brothers, these sisters the word, and the world hated them. And the world hated them, right? Because they are not of the world. Over here real quick. Um, St. John 7, 7. St. John 7 and 7. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it. That the works thereof are evil. That the works thereof is um, um, evil. First John 4, 1. Drop that. You know what I mean? He said, the world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. So we don't get offended when brothers, you know what I mean, don't want to hear us. And they start, you know what I mean, try to fight with us or whatever. You know what I mean? You despise the Heavenly Father. You despise Christ. He said, the world can't hate you, but me it hateth. Because I testified that the works thereof is evil. Christ wasn't in earth okay and brothers talking about you good and you clear. You righteous. He called it out. He said, that, you know what I mean? Shoot, I'm a hard man. You know what I mean? Christ, you know what I mean, taught the way of the Heavenly Father. And now we come in to teach the way of, way of Christ and the Most High Power. We'll read that verse again. This is St. St. John chapter 17, verse 14. Right. I have given them thy word, right. and the world hath hated them, right. because they are not of the world, right. even as I am not of the world. This is why the world hate us. He said, I have given them thy word, and... And the world hated them because they are not of the world. That's why, you know what I mean, I, I can navigate in the surf and people hate me just by the way that I live. Because I don't want to be down with Christmas and holidays. Because I don't want to eat what you want to eat and celebrate how you celebrate. Because I don't believe in the same stuff that you believe in. That's why they hate you because, I be because we locking down this word. That's why the world hates you. That's why they hate us right now. That's why they hate this preaching. Because we're not of the world, man. We're preaching the spirit from on high. Read that again. This is St. John chapter 17, verse 14. Read. I have given them thy word, uh -huh. and the world hath hated them. And the world hath hated them. You got to un understand there's going to be many more people that's going to perish than them be saved. There's only a few brothers and few sisters that's locking down this word. And the world going to hate you. That's why you got to hold out and be strong and be the righteous. Inquire on how to be the righteous, man, for whose the world is. Read. I have given them thy word, uh -huh. and the world hath hated them, uh -huh. because they are not of the world, right. even as I am not of the world. Uh -huh. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, right. but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. From the evil. He said, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but um, they should be kept from evil. You know what I mean? Christ is right now in the heavens praying for certain people to stay away from evil, but people rather be in the evil, because they love the darkness over here. First John 4 1. Read this. First John 4 and 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of the Most High, 
because many false prophets are going out into the world. Because right? many false prophets are going out into the world. He said, believe, beloved, believe not every spirit, man. You can't be in the earth and just believe in any and everybody. Who do that? Unless you simple-minded, man. Most of I say, don't believe every spirit because there's going to be false prophets in the world. People are going to hold this Bible and they're going to teach it falsely. It don't matter if you hold in the Bible. If you're wicked, then you're wicked. You got to judge the fruits, huh? You, you, you know what I mean? You got you know, you to match up all these pastors and preachers with the Bible. Go read the Bible, man. Read on. <clears throat> Hereby know ye the spirit of the Most High. Uh -huh. Every spirit. Th hold on. This is how you know the spirit from on high. Read. This is how you know it. Hereby know ye the spirit of the Most High. Read. Every spirit that confesseth that Christ is come in the flesh is of the Most High. It's of the Heavenly Father. Read on. And every spirit that confesseth not that Christ is come in the flesh is not of the Most High. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard. Right. Whereof you have heard, the spirit of Antichrist. Spirit of Antichrist means that you are an enemy of Christ. People, you know what I mean, certain people in the circle, men, it may be your mother, it may be family, it may be your closest friends. They hate Christ. They're enemies from on high. Most I told you, don't, don't make no friendships. We're at the world because the world's at enmity with the Heavenly Father. You got so many antichrists, people who um, don't believe in Christ, but yet you cool with them. But yet you hanging with them. You sipping the bottle with them. They enemies from on high. They the antichrist. And every spirit that confesseth not that Christ is come in the flesh is not of the most high. And this is that spirit of antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come. And even now, already, is it in the world? Because the Antichrist is already in the world. The Antichrist was already, you know what I mean, in the world back then, and now it's still in the world. It's multiplying. That's why many people go on pairs then be saved, man. Read on. Ye are of the Most High, little children. Christ has said, you know what I mean, they are not of the world, but we are of the Heavenly Father. Little children, obey, read. And have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You bigger than the carnal people going on in this earth. Go, uh, you're, you're holding what? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold on. John. Ye are of the most high, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. That's why the world don't hear us. You know what I mean? That's where the world, you know what I mean, flock to all these churches. You know what I mean? I bet you if um, we, we was talking about voting and politics and um, how um, to build up the community according to this, you know what I mean, this um, country and whatever, we don't have a crowd, man. We don't have people listening. But the fact of the matter that we pushing this word, people don't want to hear it. He said they are of the world and therefore the world hears them because they are of the world. Read on. We are of the most high. He that knoweth the Most High, heareth us. He, he that knoweth the Most High, heareth us. He that knoweth the Heavenly Father, they hear us. He hear the brothers who he set up. Man, read on. He that is not of the Most High, heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So we got to understand, this is a spiritual growth. There's only two spirits in this earth. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Brothers, is erring in this word. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Um, um, erring. We, 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 we got a congregation right now on the opposite corner. They operated off of a whole nother spirit. They, you know what I mean? They are earning in this word. They not pushing Christ. They are trying to push them, you know what I mean? Some man. They are of the world, man. Read on. Beloved, uh, verse, um, 1 John 4 and 6. We are of the most high. He that knoweth the most high, heareth us. He that knoweth the most high, heareth us. You know what I mean? He that know the heavenly father. St. John 14 and 15. Read on over here. This is St. John, chapter 17, verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We push this truth. That's why we're not talking about religion. Ain't no Catholics over here, Muslims or whatever. So we pushing the truth that I believe, Father. We're not a religion. We push Christ. You know what I mean? The truth in this word. That's why, you know what I mean? Man, they hate this word. Read Sanctify them through thy truth. Right. Thy word is truth. That word is the truth. Um, St. John 1.10 real quick. Read, read on over here. Read. St. John 14 and 16. 15. If ye love me, keep my commandment. You know what I mean? But we got a whole bunch of brothers and sisters talking about that they love the Heavenly Father in Christ. But they ain't keeping one commandment. 
He said, if you love me, then keep the commandment. If you love the Heavenly Father, then do what he say. Ain't no making excuses. Talk about my mama or maybe the job in the boss and whatever. If you love the Heavenly Father, then do what the Lord say. Christ, you know what I mean? Listen, we don't got to precept this up for you right here. This is, you know what I mean, clear as day. Read that again, 15. If ye love me, uh -huh. keep my commandments. And if ye love me, keep my commandments. This one is the commandment today. Thou shalt keep the, you know what I mean, you know, um, keep the Lord's Sabbath day holy. This is the Lord's Sabbath day right now. It started Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. We in the Lord's Sabbath right now. He said, if ye love me, then keep the commandments, man. Read on. And I will pray the Father. Uh -huh. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. This is what Christ is going to do. Christ died and we're raised up in earth and everything to send the spirit of truth into the earth. To comfort certain brothers. How many brothers and sisters in this earth don't got no comfort? Can't find no comfort from their woman. Can't find no comfort from their parents. You know what I mean, man? They, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? They sad, man. Sorrows in this earth. Read on. It's getting worse. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? In the bottle. You find they, you know, in the bottle, the needle. Or maybe that joint, that J. Read on. Even the spirit of truth, right. whom the world cannot receive, uh -huh. because it seeth him not, right. neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He said, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. The world can't receive this spirit. It's too carnal. You know what I mean? He said, um, um, whom... Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth them not, neither knoweth them. This is what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? The world don't know Christ. Though you got, you know what I mean, a, um, a whole bunch of um, churches, organizations and everything, got the name Christ. And they don't know the, you know what I mean, know Christ. They don't know the Heavenly Father. For First John, um, sorry, St. John 1.10 real quick. St. John chapter 1 verse 10. He was in the world. Christ was in the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. The world was made by him. And the world knew him not. And the world don't know him. 1 John 3, 1, real quick. Read this real quick. This is 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Right. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, right. that we should be called the sons of the Most High. Right. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, right. because it knew him not. Because the world don't know him. That's what, you know what I mean? But listen, man, the world don't know the Heavenly Father. They don't know Christ, and that's why they don't know us. Because we're not of the world. They of the world, you know what I mean, and, and of the world hear them. They don't hear us. They don't know the spirit of the truth. They can't even discern it. You know what I mean? It's a problem. Go back to um, Sacrifice 8 and 1. Read, um, drop that. Over here real quick. This is. Over here, man, I want Isaiah 13. Second Ezra, chapter 8, verse 1. Great. And he answered me, saying, The Most High hath made the world for many, but the world to come for few. He made this world. Excuse me. And he answered me, saying, The world hath made this world for many, but the world to come for few. But for few. Read. I will tell thee of similitude, Ezra, as when thou ask me the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold, whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of. Even so is the course of this present world. Even so is the course of this world. He said that I'm going to tell you this breakdown right here. He said the earth giving much earthen vessels. You know what I mean? A whole bunch of carnal people on this earth. The word carnal is synonymous with worldly, flesh. You know what I mean? Carnal people on this earth. He said that the earth giveth much mold, wearing earthen vessels, man. But little dust of gold cometh. That little dust. This is what we try to focus on. He said, inquire on how to be the righteous. You want to come out like gold. You, you want to be better than gold. Isaiah 13. E Ecclesiastes 2 and 1 real quick. And down to 10, I believe. Read on. Real quick. Isaiah 13. Start from verse 11. Read. Isaiah 13 and 11. Right. And I will punish the world right. for their evil right. and the wicked for their iniquity. For their iniquity. Read that again. And I will punish the world for their evil right. and the wicked for their iniquity. I'm at work the other day and whatever, right? I mean, I just popped up at the house. I'm in the work truck. I'm doing some paperwork. Man's wife came out, said that this guy got COVID, but you can still come inside. I said, you know, I said nah, man, I ain't going inside. You know what I mean? You got to reschedule with this stuff. You know what I mean? I called up my office and I told him, I said, you know what I mean? We are not going to, um, you know what I mean? We are not going to do this job today, you know, period or whatever, because this house got COVID. 
the office lady that said, man, I can't believe that people still catching COVID. I said to her, listen, COVID ain't going nowhere, man. The Lord, I sent these plagues in this earth, man, and they here to stay. You know what I mean? The Lord shot the arrow, and they not coming back. COVID, all these diseases, the killing, the sword, death, destruction, they here in this earth to stay. Why? He punished it for their evil. He said that I'm going to punish the world for their evil, their wickedness. You know what I mean? That's why we can't be a friend of the world. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be punished with them. You, you want to inquire on how to be righteous. Read. Verse 11, uh, Isaiah 13 and 11. And I will punish the worlds for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Because we got a whole bunch of brothers and sisters that's big-headed. They haughty-minded. You know what I mean? David has said, you know what I mean? Lord, don't give me a haughty mind. Now, my eyes is not lofty. You know what I mean? Don't, don't give me the big head. I'm not curious of the wicked. And now I know all the plans and everything. Whatever. I, I'm not curious of that stuff. I want to inquire on how to be right according to you. Read on. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Scripture that said that, you know what I mean, ask the earth. There's many earthen vessels coming out of it. A lot of carnal things where mold coming, but very little dust of gold coming. You want to focus on being that dust, man. You know what I mean? That's the few that is going to be saved. He said, I'm, I'm going to make a man more precious than gold. Fine gold. Read on. Okay. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Right. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. You know what I mean? Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. First Peter um, ch ch chapter 1 and verse 3 real quick. You know what I mean? You want to come out as gold. 2-1 real quick. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. My God. How about this God in this Bible? Right here. We preaching the word of the heavenly father. Read on. Read. Ecclesiasticus or Ecclesiastes? Ecclesiasticus 2-1, man. Ecclesiasticus Read. chapter 2 verse 1. Read. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, if you come in to serve the Heavenly Father, Ak, if you want to come serve the Heavenly Father, sis, you got to do what? Read on. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, Read. prepare thy soul for temptation. You got to prepare for this stuff. You got to prepare your soul for temptation because the temptation is coming to the world. Listen, when the world wants you to, you know what I mean? Listen, when the world trying to pull you in, they know that the world going down. You know what I mean? That, listen, when the temptation is coming to the world. And you got to prepare yourself. You got to know where the temptation is coming from, how it's coming, when it's coming, and stuff like that. You got to prepare yourself by this word. Read on. Set thy heart aright right. and constantly endure. And constantly endure. Ain't no time to flake out and flee. Read. You know what I mean? Things get tough and get hard and whatever. Ain't, ain't no time for that. Read. He said constantly endure. Christ has said right here, you know what I mean? The um, same that, the um, same that, um, that endure is going to be saved. Read on. The same, um, he that endureth to the end. Right. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Read on. Here we go. Cleave unto him, and right. depart not away, right. that thou mayest be increased Three at thy last. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. Three. Set thy heart aright, right. and constantly endure, constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. And when time of trouble come, don't make no haste. You know what I mean? You so quick to run. Over there, over there, never trying to hide from the Heavenly Father. You know what I mean? This is how the most I do. He going to bring you out of that pit. He going to break you out of that rut. He going to break you out of your problems, but you got to believe. Where your faith at? Read. Cleave unto him and depart not away. Right, but depart not away. Cleave unto him. This is how you cleave. You follow after this word of truth and sincerity. This is how you cleave the heavenly father. You don't get, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, you don't fret. And you don't get angry. You know what I mean, start fleeing. Read. You know what I mean, start cursing the heavenly father. He going to keep you there. Read. Cleave unto him and right. depart not away, right. that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. As people consider they're in the, their last end, how is it going to go for me in the end? People so curious, you know what I mean, so I'm blown away about what's happening right now, but what about in the future? What's going to happen with you in the end? People don't want the Bible and try to live their lives without the Bible, and then they lose their life. And man, their life get cut short. That's a problem. Read on. Man, listen, but your life not promised to you. Listen, man, you know what I mean? The, Lord got power over life and death. Which one do you want? Life or death? Read. Whatsoever is brought upon thee. A whole bunch of people dying in this earth, man. Read. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, read. take cheerfully. Right, take cheerfully. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Keep your chin up. Keep, keep your head up, man. Whatsoever is brought upon thee. If your woman leave you because you try to strive to be righteous, then so be it. Take it cheerfully. If your children don't talk to you no more because you want to live righteous in the Lord and everything, take it cheerfully. 
It don't matter. If your man leave you because he see you in a skirt and a dress, you talk about the Sabbath and everything. You know what I mean? Take it cheerfully. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take it cheerfully. That's the counsel from the Bible. Read. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, Read. take cheerfully Read. and be patient. When thou art changed to a lower state. You know what I mean? Because some people, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, it's high in America. They have a high status, but when you come to the Heavenly Father, you got to abase yourself. You got to become lowly and base. You know what I mean? And take it cheerfully. Read on. For gold is tried in a fire. Here's that gold. For gold is tried in the fire. Read. For gold is tried in the fire. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And acceptable men in the... In the furnace of adversity. He said that he is going to make a man more precious than fine gold. First Peter 3 and uh, I mean 1 and 3. Read on. First Peter 1 and 3. Blessed be the most high and father of our Lord Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ from the dead. How do a brother become, you know I mean, born again? How do you become born again, man? He said, blessed be the, blessed be the heavenly father who hath begotten us. To a new lively hope. It's through this word. We are begotten of the heavenly father through this word. Read. To an inheritance incorruptible right. and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for right. you. Right. Read on. Who are kept by the power of the most high right. through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Read on. Wherein ye greatly rejoice. Right. Though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. Right, through manifold temptation. That's why he said prepare thy soul for temptation. Because there's going to be many different types of temptations going on coming at you. The tempters in the earth too. There ain't no red man with horns and a pitchfork down onto the earth talking about this hell and whatever. He's right here in the earth. He walketh about whom, you know, you, know, you, know, you know, seeking. Seeking whom he may devour, man. We can read Job. You know what I mean? Satan was, you know what I mean, in the earth walking to and fro. He right here in the earth with you. He, you know what I mean? Again, man, he may be your friend. He may be family members or whatever. You got to know this. You got to acknowledge this stuff. Read. The, that the trial of your faith right. being much more precious than of gold that perishes. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold. That's what I'm talking about. Then the Lord going to make a man more precious than fine gold. Then the golden wedge of all fear. You know what I mean? Very little dust. Come up out of it. Those are the brothers and sisters that is going to be saved. Go to, um, you're, you're holding what? Zachariah, yeah. Read it real quick. I mean, drop that. Um, go to, um, go to Matthew 3, uh, 7 and 13 real quick. Read this real quick. It says, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Read. And it shall come to pass uh -huh. that in all the land, saith uh -huh. the Lord, right. two parts therein shall be cut off right. and die. Right. But the third shall be left therein. He said in all the land, he said two parts is going to be cut off and die. But the third, but the third part, you got to put it in perspective, man. Say if there's, you know I mean, 9,000 people, 6,000 of them going to pierce, 3,000 getting saved. You know what I mean? You got to think about it in thirds. He said two parts of it is going to die. But the third part, this is what I'm going to do with the fire. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at the third, read. And I will bring the third part through the fire. Through the fire. This is the fire right now. You stand it up for righteousness. He that departed from evil, making himself a prey. Everybody don't like you now. They don't hate you because you're standing up for the righteous stuff. This is what it is. This is the fire. Read. And I will bring the third part through the fire. Read. And will refine them as silver is refined. I'm going to refine them as silver. And will, we, and will try them as gold is tried. Right. They shall call on my name, right. and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, right. and they shall say, the Lord is my power. For the Lord is my power. Go back to Exodus real quick and read on um, 2 and on um, 3 real quick. Second Ezra 8 and 2. This is Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 2. Read. I will tell the assimilitude, Ezra, right. as when thou askest the earth, uh -huh. it shall say unto thee, that it giveth much mold whereof earthen vessels are made, right. but little dust that gold cometh of. Uh -huh. Even so is the course of this present world. Right. There be many created, right. but few shall be saved. But few shall be saved. Many created, but few going to be saved. The masses of people, the masses of the world, the multitude of the people not going to make it. Read on real quick. Here's why. St. Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Many going in through this wide gate. Read. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, uh -huh. which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And few there be that find it. You can't find, you know what I mean, a whole bunch of brothers, a whole bunch of sisters doing this stuff. They like gold, man. They like gold. 
Focus on being that gold, man. Be righteous. And with that, Brothers United in Christ, Shalom.